right, so let's get our last video started for the how you doing um, bowler handbag. So this video will be starting on step number 21. So we have both of the um, lining zipper panels and we need to press this long straight edge one half inch toward the wrong side. So what I do when I do that to make sure I get an even half inch the entire length is measure one inch in from the edge, from that straight edge. I'm going to mark a line. Um, this is not erasable marking pen, it's just a pen, but it won't show on the outside, so it won't matter. And I'll do that with the other one. Okay, and then what I'll do is at my sewing machine, or I'm sorry, at my iron, I'm going to fold that straight edge to the line I just drew and press. And that way I have an even half inch all the way along. So I'm going to go press these and I'll be right back. Okay, I have both of the long straight edges pressed one half inch under to the wrong side. And now I need my um, lining side gusset panels. So with the lining side gusset panel right side up with the short edge at the top, I'm going to place the zipper lining panels right sides down and I will match up um, the curved edge of the lining zipper panel with the side edge of the side gusset piece put that in place and then add the other lining zipper panel and there should be one half inch of a gap between the two folded under edges. And this is where we'll be attaching it to the exterior of the bag along the zipper at the end. So it'll be just like this. And now we'll attach this using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So everything that we do in the lining is the same process as completing the exterior, but we'll use a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I typically don't sew across that part. It won't matter if you do. I mean, you'll fold right along that stitching anyway, but. And if you'll notice, I backstitch everywhere. I don't always say, but it's always a good idea to do, to backstitch. Okay, and now I will press this um, side gusset panel away from the lining zipper panels and press the seam allowance toward the side gusset panel. All right, so I've got the side gusset panel pressed away from the lining zipper panels. And I went ahead and attached the other um, side gusset panel to the same point. And now you'll just top stitch through the side gusset panel and through the seam allowance that's pressed to the back using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I thought it was a cat here. All right. We'll 
set the gusset aside for now while we complete the um, lining slip pocket. So we have two lining slip pocket panels. We want to place these right sides together and pin or clip along the top edge. All right, this I'm going to sew, I think I only use, oh, yep. Yeah one quarter inch seam allowance here at the top of this. Okay, now I'm going to press these wrong sides together and then I'll top stitch. Alright, I flipped the pocket panels right wrong sides together and now I'm going to top stitch here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. to um, press this in half, just finger press, so fold in half, and finger press to find the center, and then take one of your lining main panels and fold that in half as well to find the center, and crease. Alright, so now we are going to line this up along the bottom and sides. Clip that in place. And then we'll baste around the edges. And then we're going to put one line of stitching along that middle fold there um, to separate this into two separate pockets. So I just use a quarter inch seam allowance to base this in place. Um, you can, for extra strength, to add extra strength to your pockets, you can add a rivet um, right there to the center above this line of stitching. So I'm just kind of following that crease that I put in place. And then when you get to the top, make sure that you back stitch well. panel aside and we will do the other lining main panel which has a zipper in it. So I have my lining interior zipper pocket panel wrong side up 
Um, let me find my ruler. Okay, let me actually get a zipper out. Hmm. I have this whole bag here, I think. We'll go with this light pink color. Light pink or gray? I think I'll use gray. I'm not much of a light pink person. Okay, so we will first draw a line one inch from the top or whichever edge of your interior zipper pocket is the top. Um, draw a line that is seven inches long, one inch down from the top. And then another line that is seven inches long and one half inch below the first line. And then draw two short lines close that rectangle in. I will press this zipper interior, interior zipper pocket panel in half, wrong sides together, and finger press to crease it so I know where the middle is. And then I'll pr press this interior main panel that does not have the slip pocket attached in half as well. So you, I have a center crease on each of these. I'll mark the centers and I want to have that center part about three quarters of an inch down from the top, which it is. And you'll know it is when the corners line up with the main panel. Let me make sure that it's straight. So the bottom fold also matches the fold on the other side. And we'll use some pins here. To pin this together. Now I use a shorter stitch length for this. Um, so I'll go with two and a half. Back stitch when you start and when you stop and I'm just stitching all the way around the rectangle. When you reach a corner, stop with your needle down and turn. All right, I'm gonna trim those threads. <clears throat> all right, pull all my pins out. And now I want to... 
Now I'm going to draw a line down the center of that rectangle lengthwise that stops about a half inch from each end. And then I'll draw a line from the end of that line to each corner of that box. And I'm going to cut right along these lines now. I do this most of the time with my rotary cutter. And just make sure when you get to the corners here that you don't snip through your stitching. So now what we're going to do is go to the ironing board and I'm going to pull this entire pocket panel through the opening and press everything flat so that we have an open rectangle where the zipper will go. So we have our rectangle pressed nicely and now we'll put the zipper in. Um, I like to use an Elmer's glue stick and I just put a thin line of the glue which dries clear so if you're a little bit messy you won't see it. But I put this right along the opening and then I'm just going to place my zipper. I like it to zip close to the left. Um, in the opening and then flip it over to make sure I have it centered if you need to adjust adjust it and then firmly press it into place I want my stopper to be a little closer all right so obviously here I have a longer zipper than um, the seven inch zipper called for in the pattern so I usually just have like a huge bag of like 12 to 14 inch zippers, depending. And um, I'll just go ahead and trim the extra off. So now I'm just going to press that into place and the glue should hold it good enough to get to my sewing. I'm going to get over here under my needle. And we'll increase our stitch length and top stitch 1 8 of an inch around the opening to hold the zipper in place. from these threads. I'm 
can see, and there's no glue showing. So I'm going to trim the end of my zipper off. And then fold my pocket in half, bringing the bottom edge up to the top edge. And you can press this if you choose. I won't just because we're doing the video, but you can press the bottom closed um, to get a nice crease there. And then put just the pocket together, not the main panel. And then from this side, fold the main panel out of the way and just stitch all the way around your pocket. And just make sure as you go, you fold the main panel out of the way. I'm just using a one-half inch seam allowance here. I suppose it really doesn't matter. All right, and then I'm going to trim this seam allowance down, and that will just help um, so that it doesn't get caught later when I attach the gusset. The top corners are pretty close. Okay. So now my lining main panels are completed. Um, if you sell your bags and you want to sew a tag on, or even if you don't sell but you want to tag, do that now. Alright, so now we'll repeat the same procedure that we used on the exterior to attach the gusset and the bottom panel. So, mark the centers along the top and bottom of each main panel on the wrong side. The bottom is already marked here because of the stitching and I have my fold from before. Let me make sure that's right. No, it isn't. Alright, and then each of the short ends here. Mark. mark this one and then bring each of the short ends together to mark the centers of the long end edges. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that all the way across, which will help me later when I attach the zip or attach the lining to the exterior. Okay, so now we want to follow the same procedure. I'm going to match the centers and place a couple clips in place. This is a little easier because they don't have to worry about the um, connectors or um, the overlays matching. So we'll just match the bottom. And then ease around the corners. And again, as I've mentioned in previous videos and the other video for this, um, the edges are not going to match exactly. It's at the seam allowance line that should match. So if 
the very edge of it is wrinkled in the corner, that's okay as long as it isn't along the seam allowance, that line. It's like you don't want to sew over the wrinkles, but they may be along the edge. Can you see how it's wrinkled there? But where I sew down here, it doesn't. All right, so now I switch this to a shorter stitch length of three. And I'm going to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And so it's just like I did the exterior. Um, also, I don't have to worry about piping this time, so that makes it easier. Pay attention to where the other part of your um, gusset is so that you're not sewing through that. And sometimes it helps to, um, rather than completely remove the clips as you go, just to slide them out to the edge so that you can sew next to them. And that way it continues to hold the fabric in place. Which is especially helpful around curves. So that side is complete. I'm going to trim that seam allowance down now. And then we'll repeat that to attach the other lining main panel. First starting at the top. And then the bottom. And up and ease around the curves. And you'll have to move the corners of the pocket. I guess it wouldn't matter if it got caught in the seam allowance here, but I move the corners of the pocket out of the way as I go. And this lining fabric also I got from uh, So Weird on Facebook. She has a group. Again, we'll use a 5 8 inch seam allowance.
and it might help rather than holding these um, corners of the pocket out of the way, you might want to pin that back. It's up to you. And I'm just sliding the clips out towards the edge as I sew and leaving them in place to hold the curves together. easier that way. any clips and then I'm going to trim this seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch. I'm trying to hurry now because uh, I'd like to keep this video under one hour so Now we will pin, oh, let's mark the centers on our lining uh, bottom panel. Along the long edges. And then along the short edges. So as soon as I get done with this, it's Sunday, and that means I'm grocery shopping, which does not sound like fun. So I'm just matching up the center marks along the long edges first, exactly as we did with the exterior. And then the short center. And then everything in between around the curves. are getting tired. <laughs> Alright, so now we'll sew this using a 5 8 inch seam allowance also. Thank you. 
do is do a few stitches and I'll lift my presser foot up and adjust as I go around curves. Um, I don't know if that's, I think it's just something over time with sewing that I picked up to help me be in control of where I was sewing, I guess. Um, around the corners can be a, more of a challenge. So I think one of the most important things to make nice bags is just to be patient. Put which I'm not. But I guess I am when it comes to bag making. I just feel like I'm slow, really. And it helps always too when you're sewing on the bottom to have like one hand inside the bag. Um, you can kind of feel to make sure you're not sewing over any um, pleats or anything. You don't want any of that sewn into your lining. sure that your um, interior zipper pocket is pushed out of the way too so that you're not sewing it into the seam somehow. Alright, trim those threads and then I'm going to, let me make sure this doesn't look bad inside. Always check your seam before you trim the seam allowance. Alright, and then go ahead and trim that seam allowance down. Carefully. So this is probably the next part is what people don't like about drop-in linings, um, I'm guessing. And I don't know if they just have a hard time. It can be difficult at first. Um, when I used my domest domestic sewing machine, I used to like remove the um, swinger. I don't know what that's called. Remove that part so that you have the thing that you could fit it inside the bag. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what that's called. I think it's called a swing arm, but that doesn't sound right. Okay, so you have your bag is right side out, the exterior, on right side in, the way it will be when it's completed, and we're going to place the whole lining inside the exterior. Now, the reason why we used a larger seam allowance um, on the lining is so that it fits nicely with inside the foam and everything. Okay, so I'm going to only worry about one half of this at a time. I'm going to get my clips. All right, and first, I have the center marks that I made and I'm going to match up the center marks and I'm going to put, do you see the center marks here, matching, and I'm going to put the lining so that it just covers the line of stitching on that zipper, the outermost one. I want it to be just past that. And then I'm going to clip it in place. And I will do that. The whole other side can just get pushed out of the way. Don't worry about crunching your bag up. Um, we'll press it when we're finished. I find it easiest to kind of flip it as I clip it. <laughs> Alright. 
do the other side. Just make sure you're keeping it even. And then we're going to also, before we sew, because clips can pop off, we'll um, put a few pins in here also to help hold it. pins. I'm going to flip this all back right side out. I'm going to be sewing it this direction so I'll put the pins this way. So I'm just putting them back here so they're out of the way all the way through the exterior and the lining just so that it will help hold everything in place and keep everything from shifting. And you can go all the way down bottom I'll throw a couple over here make sure you're covering that stitching Pins don't glide very easily. Okay, so we're only worrying about one side at a time. We've got about 12 minutes of video time left. Looks like my uh, memory is full and it's going to stop me in about 12 minutes. So let's get this bag done. Alright, I'm changing back to my gray thread um, for the exterior side of the bag. And I'm going to leave the blue thread as my lining. So hopefully my tension is set correctly and you don't see like blue dots on the outside. Alright, I want a nice long stitch length. I'm going to completely crunch the other side of the bag out of my way and kind of decide which sewing foot. I'm going to leave this foot on. So I'm going to do this top stitching um, at a quarter inch seam allowance. Since I did do a 1 8 inch seam allowance top stitching um, to attach the, or to top stitch the zipper after I sewed that part. So that's completely up to you. I'm just now making sure that my lining is pulled under here. Alright, see how I crunched the whole bag up to just get all the way back to the very end of the zipper, or the very end of the zipper panels. I'm going to do just a couple stitches and then I'm going to back stitch a few stitches maybe. All right. And then make sure you stab yourself with a pen. All right, I'm just going to take this slowly. Um, and top stitch all the way along, making sure that I'm catching that lining fabric underneath. And since I did do that top stitching before at an eighth of an inch, I'm just making sure that this top stitching is um, lined up evenly with that first top stitching. And make sure that your lining fabric is covering the 
stitching that's on the zipper. And if it isn't, it really isn't a big deal, just as long as you're not showing raw edges inside. lining is not difficult. You just need to take your time. I hope that I hope that my videos are helpful, um, especially to people who want to try new techniques but are nervous about it or um, not quite sure. I don't know. Sometimes it helps to see it being done versus only seeing a picture or reading a description. So, yeah, hopefully this is helpful for people that are uh, nervous about trying a drop-in lining. I'd love to hear if, if you tried one because of the video. Let me know. I'd love to know that. always make sure that when you stop to adjust things um, that your needle is in the down position and really don't worry about crunching your bag up to hand crank that a couple times and then back stitch a few stitches. Alright, look at that. We have one side done. So that wasn't so bad. Alright, since I'm running out of video time, I'm going to go ahead and pause this um, so that I can attach the handles on video. So I'm going to pause this and attach the other side um, and then I'll be back. All right, so I have the other side attached to the lining as well. Um, everything looks good there. I'm sure I'll have fun pressing this and not touching any of the piping or vinyl when I get done, but everything is assembled. So the last thing you do is your handles. If you are going to sew them on um, and you're using vinyl, you would just press one inch to the back and place it around a rectangle ring and then you'll stitch close to the as close to the rectangle as you can and then again about a half inch above so that there's two lines of stitching going across. Um, if you are going to use fabric for your handles you would press this to the wrong side one half inch and then again one inch so that the raw edges are enclosed slide your rectangle ring into that fold and then sew it the same way. Um, also, you can use rivets, which is what I'm going to do. So you make two marks on the handle. You can see this, one half inch from the end, and then another that is two and one half inches from the end. Um, use, I bought this from Tandy Leather. It's a leather punch. Um, there are different sizes. So this is the second to the smallest size. And I'm just going to cut punch those holes into my handles. Okay. 
and I made the marks on each end. And again, that's one half inch from the end and then two and a half inches from the end. So the marks are two inches apart. And then I have um, these rivets are nine millimeter, I believe. Just put it through um, each hole. And then place the cap on the back. And then I have this rivet press, which I purchased from Gold Star Tool. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't like them. I haven't had any issues with mine. Um, and it was the cheapest place I could find it. So that's why I got that one, and it works fine for me. So. Make sure you don't twist your handle. Place your other rivet on the back, or the cap, I guess. Oh, sorry about that. So once I attach the handle, um, they make strap ends that a lot of people use and you just clamp it over the end of the strap. If you don't have those, I like to, um, after I attach the rivets, trim that end piece off just so that it's nice and straight and even and it doesn't look straggly, scraggly, whatever. And there you have it. The handle's attached. I'll repeat that to attach the other handle, and then I'm going to very carefully press the whole bag, and we're done. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that you'll share your finished bags in my Facebook group, which is Sincerely Jen Patterns Group. Um, post them to Instagram, hashtag Sincerely Jen. Um, I guess hashtag how you do in bowler bag. How, how you doing bowler handbag yes bowler handbag I don't know whatever um, I just hope you share your bags I want to see them um, that's one of the most exciting things to see people make a bag from a pattern that you created and without everybody's support I would not be doing this so thank you everybody I hope this video is helpful to you